welcome everyone. Um, and uh, today I wanted to run through a little bit of a presentation before we move to Q&A, where I'll talk a little bit about finance um, and why it's important to study finance, um, and also why you should apply in the applied finance degrees. Um, and also then uh, run through um, some details behind what's, uh, what happens in the course. So uh, welcome, my name is Lindsay Bryan. I am actually the director of the Applied Finance um, postgraduate courses. Um, and I'm actually a graduate of this program myself. So I've um, got a pretty good familiarity with it. So welcome to this session. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions a little bit later. Make sure you do pop them in the chat. Um, and uh, if they can be answered, they'll be answered, but we'll also cover some questions at the end as well. So what I wanted to cover today is really just a little bit about why study at fi finance, why study with us at Macquarie, um, what you can expect if you enroll in this course or our courses, uh, a little bit of the details, and then we can get to some questions. So it's very much about giving you a bit of a flavor, giving you a taste, and then letting you have the opportunity to ask some questions. Okay, the first thing we always like to do in anything to do with finance is get some definitions right. Um, the best place to always go and get definitions for a presentation is of course, Google. Um, and so if you use Google's wonderful um, completion feature, you put in finance is in the toolbar, um, you get a whole lot of things that it's the study of stuff, it's fun, it's crucial, it's the lifeblood of business, the lifeblood of industry. I don't know what Quizlet is. Some people think it's cool, I do too. Um, others think it's a gun. But you can see that from those answers and from the things that are in there, that it is pretty much the lifeblood of everything that happens in business and in industry. It's a really crucial concept to understand. If you don't understand the financial system, it's very hard to do anything in business. And indeed, it's very hard to do a lot of things in life. And unfortunately, a lot of people have experienced just what finance is about um, by the what's happened with the pandemic. You know, we've got a lot of things that have gone on and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Now, one of the other things about finance is it does revolve around money. Now, each of these three things are um, each um, have been used as um, money at various times. Over on the left there, you've got the rum bottle. Uh, in the early days of the colony in Australia, that was the currency. Rum was what people used to, um, to trade and uh, was a currency of great value. In the middle is the Roman coin. Obviously coins, everyone's used to that being money. Um, and then over on the right is the conch shell, um, which unusually has been used as a currency from time to time. So anything that is considered to be have a value um, is always going to be considered to be money as long as everyone accepts it. And so it's very important that we understand what is used for money and how it's used, and which leads us to the next thing, that money is changing dramatically. Once upon a time, people used to write checks. They used to write a lot of checks and everything was paid through checks. So checks were a really important thing, but you can see from the way that they've gone that they keep dropping in um, relevance. So it's now, you know, they reduce in number by 20% just about every year. The other thing is, and you can see this in the middle um, uh, graph there, is that debit and credit cards are by far the most common method for transacting uh, for people in, any, in Australia, and cash is diminishing rapidly. And you would have seen over the period of the pandemic, cash would have dropped to almost nothing. Almost no one uses cash. Um, and that, what that has done is actually increase the use of alternatives such as the new payments platform where previously businesses have used cash, they're now using new payments platform. So it's very important to understand where all of these things fit into the overall picture. And this is very much what our degree is about. So apart from the financial system, there's also analyzing the impacts of what happens over time to an industry. If you were in the airline industry, prior to the pandemic, then you probably wouldn't have expected to see such a dramatic fall in capacity. What has happened is that airlines um, are not flying anywhere near as much as they had previously, where they might have allowed for a minus five, 10% downturn, they're experiencing near 99% downturn in their market. 
So with, you can see on the left there, that airline capacity has dropped to a, an enormous level um, and much, much more than all previous um, impacts. And you can see there that this is the experience that they are experiencing now is worse than the September 11 attacks. Um, and that was a pretty dramatic impact on the way that people flew. This then has roll on effects. So it's not only airlines that are impacted, it's also businesses like airports. And on the right there, that is Sydney Airport. You can imagine that in January, uh, they were probably expecting to see a similar pattern emerge to, uh, in the, uh, pr to the previous period. Um, and they would have a drop in January, February over the school holidays, and then it would pick up again over March, April as business got back to flying around the country. Of course, what's happened is that capacity drop in the airline industry has resulted in very, very few passengers. And the only passengers they've really processed in Sydney Airport on any regular basis have, people, have been people returning from overseas and then going into quarantine. So it's really important to understand what is happening to those industries and then work out, well, what do you do? And in a lot of these cases, a lot of the airlines are struggling and are getting support. In the case of Sydney Airport, they had a strategy to increase their cash resources and make sure that they had enough resources to keep going through the, um, the pandemic until traffic can recover. And then equally, they've been taking advantage of all the programs that are available to assist them. The key, key thing for an airport like Sydney Airport is how quickly does that capacity recover? And so those are the sorts of things that, will be in, that the finance people will be looking at on a regular basis. Equally, a stark thing that businesses are, le are learning now is do they understand the difference between profits and cash flow? Uh, if you're not making money, that does, if you're making profits, that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a cash flow. Um, if you're losing money, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not getting cash flow because you are generally going to collect what has been owing to you. However, making sure that you have enough cash is one of the key things that a business needs to do and therefore all corporate treasuries and corporate finance professionals will be interested in where is our cash coming from? Have we got enough to survive? So turning now to why study with Macquarie. Now our postgraduate applied finance courses um, are very much for postgraduates and also for post experience people. That means that people who have been working for a period of time, you not only need to um, be, uh, have a finance background, um, whether that be a bachelor's degree or through other purposes, uh, other means, uh, you also need to have work experience. And indeed, if you have work experience, but no bachelor degree, we also can accommodate that. The really critical thing is that you've got some experience that you can contribute when it comes to the classes with other students. Oh, gone too far. So the sorts of people that we um, attract and that we are looking for in our courses You've got some profiles here, I won't go through them, but they range from people who want to complete a master's quite quickly, people from a non-financial background who want to learn more, um, work in finance, are loving what they're doing and want to take it to the next step. They want to um, learn a little bit about what they can do in the future. Others like Phoebe, who has a FinTech background, would like to understand finance so that they can learn how to develop their business or indeed there might be someone who has studied undergrad in, in Australia, works in that finance role, and the employer is gonna pay for them to do their master's degree so they can get a promotion in finance. All of those things can be accommodated for, through this, um, our degrees, um, and our courses are there to assist. And the way that we structure this is that if there's a non-finance person who needs to understand finance, and they need those skills and knowledge, then they can do the graduate certificate of finance. Um, if they don't, if they want to do more than that, they want to learn about some practical details um, and they don't necessarily want to do the entire masters, they can do a graduate diploma of applied finance. But if they want to move to other more senior roles, they want to get that deep knowledge and deep understanding and, and the skills and knowledge they need to excel, then they will do the master of applied finance. And even non-finance people can do go right through and do the master of applied finance. It is quite flexible like that. The main thing is we need to know that you have experience and you can contribute. What you can expect in the, the course, um, and let, let's spend a bit, a little bit of time on this. Um, this is an interactive course. It's not only, or it's not just 
you sit in a lecture and you have someone tell you all the things you need to know. That is absolutely not what we were about. Even in the recent situation where in term two and in term three, we are moving to online classes because we can't have face-to-face -face classes, we're still making sure that they are interactive. So the lecturers have spent a lot of time in converting the classes into uh, interactive classes, but online. And the idea is to make sure that all of, the, all of the students have the ability to interact with not only the lecturer, but also with each other. It is quite common in our lectures to have um, a academic and a practitioner jointly um, delivering the unit. And the, uh, the idea behind that is to make sure that we not only have academic rigor, but we also have practical experience so that you can learn from someone else's experience of how they got into finance and where they, um, where they took that, uh, as well as learning the core things that you need to know about uh, the financial knowledge and the technical knowledge. So even in the situation where it's online, it is interactive. In normal circumstances, the face-to-face -face classes tend to be uh, done in blocks. And that means that you get an intensive session on the particular subject and you get to interact with students uh, throughout an evening or a day. Um, we generally offer both online and face-to-face -face learning to a certain extent anyway. So even if the, um, the classes themselves are face-to-face, -face, there is an element of online discussion. There's an element of um, online webinars for some of the units. Um, and we're seeing more demand and increasing demand for that. I think one of the net effects of um, the situation we're in now where every class is online is that we're actually going to incorporate more online elements and what it'll mean, it'll be, it'll mean greater interaction and greater face-to-face -face contact. Um, we're very focused on being work friendly. Most of our students, almost all of our students are working in a job and therefore uh, our classes will always be after work or during the weekend. Uh, we don't generally run classes during the day, so you're not required to take leave. Um, even our exams will be generally in the evenings and on weekends. And this is very much about applied finance. So this is about applying financial concepts, theories and understandings to real life situations. Wherever possible, we try to use a case study or an example of what is happening in the world today. And so you will often find that things that are happening in the current environment are being reflected in the classes that you attend. Uh, and it's very much about giving you skills to enable you to move on with your career. Um, I think I've skipped one. Yes, I have. Okay, so there are five compulsory units in the, in the degree. Um, they cover things like um, the fundamentals of portfolio theory um, and making sure that everyone is ready to apply those in real life situations. It covers things like derivatives and how to price them and also how cash flows um, and corporate finance basics can be done. Then financial instruments is very much focused on the derivatives and the debt instruments. Um, financial risk management, as it states, really talking about risk management, how you should manage risk, how you can measure it, how you can model it, and how you can interpret it. And then corporate finance is about the financing decisions that a firm makes and why they make them. In professional practice, it is the final core unit. It gives you some professional skills like influencing communication and then gives you the opportunity to examine an issue in some detail, research it, provide your research, complete a paper, um, and that is really the final of the core units. And it's, enable, it's a capstone that enables you to bring everything together. So elective units. Um, they are based on giving you the skills that you can use in business every day. Um, in one of the cases, um, one of our students said that they were asked to do a risk management review of a portfolio for a responsible entity at work. I mean, in doing so, they were drawing on their experience from doing financial risk management, doing a con conducting a Monte Carlo simulation and exploring the range of likely outcomes. So they were able to directly apply the knowledge that, and skills that they gain from that um, core unit to um, apply that to their work. So the elective units that we put together are really based around what area of work you're in or you'd like to get to. So whether it be um, as in the finance business, part of a business or corporate treasury, 
If you're doing business or project valuation, the funds management industry, superannuation and wealth management, corporate advisory, and corporate and business banking. And what you might notice is that if you look at all of these um, all of these units that are offered, then they do cross over between the various streams. So there's no requirement that if you are working in funds management or you want to work in funds management, that you have to do those units. It is quite flexible. You do have the flexibility to go and do the units that you want to do. Uh, however, there are a set of electives that we believe align more to that industry, and you might want to consider doing that. With some of the accreditations and some of the um, further study and further accreditations you can get, there are requirements on the units you must do, in which case that will be made clear and we can actually go through that when you've enrolled. Um, one of the things I would say is that the program gets some good feedback from people. Um, some of the feedback here talks about how portfolio management uh, enabled them to get a position as a portfolio manager in a fixed income fund. Um, in others, they said they've been able to add material to their uh, value to their organization and the people with whom they work. So these are people that have given us the feedback that what we have done has helped them get a new job, get them uh, into a new career, um, or even just developed a business from scratch. In one case, one of our students actually took his paper from portfolio practice, professional practice, which is the capstan, and turn that into a consulting business, which he still works at today. We do have a good um, array of faculty and guest speakers. Um, we have people like Alison, who um, takes professional practice and corporate treasury management, XBHP, um, studied in the course. Jane Dowgard, who is the deputy head of the Department of Applied Finance, has had a long career in finance, and is these days very focused on ESG research. James Waddell held, actually is a Director of Sustainable Finance at NAB. Anthony Corr is um, working in a funds manager as the Head of Research. Stephen Reed works at Deloitte in Valuations, and so it goes on. So we have a wide variety of lecturers we can call on to provide the professional knowledge and skills that you need in conjunction with our academic staff. Um, we also um, have um, we have a number of students who have gone on to bigger and better things. Here we have Cynthia Whelan, who's at Centre these days. Um, started off in investment banking, ended up through Telstra to work in a um, property company or a, a shopping centre company. And then Anthony Hadley, who went through the entire journey from um, not having a finance degree to working in infrastructure equity at AMB Capital. Um, there are many other examples too. So I could give you the example of Elizabeth Gaines, who's the CEO of Fortescue, is, um, did her Masters of Applied Finance, and Rob Scott, who's the um, Managing Director of West Farmers, also did a Master of Applied Finance. Some of those partnerships we mentioned and the further accreditations. Um, this program is very helpful for people who want to go on to do their CFA. Um, many people do this course and then head on to do the CFA. Some people do the CFA, fail, then come do this course and go back and do it again. Uh, in the case of Kaya, which is about in alternative investments, um, we have scholarships that are available to students who have done the right units. Um, and with that, you can take their exams, which are similar to the CFA, but for alternative investments, and you will um, get a discount on that. For the Association of Corporate Treasurers, we actually have access to um, a wide range of benefits which will enable you to gain the third, the second highest qualification that the Association of Corporate Treasurers has um, by doing our units um, and one other at the Association of Corporate Treasurers. Um, and then uh, in the case of the Chartered Accountants Australia New Zealand, if you're a member and you want to take up the business valuation specialisation, then you, there are a certain number of units you can do that will enable you to get that specialisation with CANS. Um, we also have seminars and uh, alumni networking opportunities. Um, at the moment, these uh, seminars are um, online, they're webinars, um, but we also utilize the facilities we have at the city campus to put those on during the day and in the evening to enable our um, industry practitioners and academics to, to get, provide information to a broad audience of financial professionals, be they alumni, students, or just members of industry 
who have an interest in this area. The networking opportunities are not only for alumni, they're also for students. We have an, a regular range of student get togethers, mostly with the uh, MBA students um, and uh, the other post um, graduate work, post work, uh, post experience um, classes, my apologies. Um, some of our alumni have been giving some, some feedback recently in some rankings, and these are some of the things that they've said, that their masters led directly to promotion. Um, they felt it was 10 out of 10. And while they didn't get their current position through uni, uh, the course itself was integral in enabling them to be accepted into a new position. And I think this is one of the crucial things for you as um, prospective students is that we won't necessarily find you a job, but you will gain skills and knowledge that will enable you to move into the area that you want to get to. There are enough people who are in a similar position or in similar industries who are more than willing to help um, and give you the contacts that you need to be able to get yourself the job that you want. Um, and you only get that through enrolling and being part of these classes. So some of the details that you need to know about. Um, we really have four essential um, ways to do um, this. Starting from the right, there is a graduate certificate of finance. Um, that is essentially the one that replaces a bachelor degree in finance. So if you have a non-finance bachelor and you want to just gain some finance skills, you can do the graduate certificate of finance. If you have never worked in finance before, but you want to have some finance skills, you can do the graduate certificate of finance. There are four units. There's 40 credit points to get. We take intakes every term um, and it is fully online. So it is done through our online uh, learning platform, the same one we use through the rest of the university. We have discussion forums, study material, videos, um, references, articles, and Q and A's with lecturers. Um, and obviously you get the support of the, the student support team. If you just want to learn about some particular areas to build on your skills, the Graduate Diploma of Applied Finance is a useful way to do that. You do portfolio management and valuation, and then you can do six other electives, or you could do a combination of electives and core units. Um, that is a lot quicker and a lot less study involved, lots of, a lot less expense, and later on you can actually go and turn that into a Master of Applied Finance if you want. If you are looking to do the full masters and you don't have a, um, a finance bachelor's degree, then you do a 120 credit point masters, which means you do those four foundation units, which you can see in the graduate certificate of finance. You do five core units and you do six elective units. Um, and that will actually um, take you um, about two and a bit years, um, depending on how quickly you get through it. And it, that's where you get the combination of online graduate certificate units and you get the face-to-face -face units when we're able to deliver them. Um, you also get access to the city campus, which has study areas and an ability to go in there and use the facilities to study, as well as the library um, and all the software tools that go with that and the student support team. If you have a finance degree and you want to do the masters, you can do the 80 credit point masters where you do the five core units and the six electives. Um, and that is by far the quickest way to get through it. That will take about one and a half years part-time. Okay, so the application closing dates. We are actually closed for graduate certificate of finance um, uh, uh, enrollments. However, we do have the ability to take late enrollments um, as long as you're very quick. If you wanna get in and get studying, um, then we can do that as long as you're pretty quick about getting your, um, your um, responses in. Um, for term four is the next intake of uh, across all the units um, and those close in August. Again, if you want to um, enroll or you're interested in enrolling, we have the way to, uh, a way to um, do that. Um, you can book a consultation, you can learn more about um, the degrees uh, and the courses. Um, and I'm happy to have those discussions with people um, at, a, at a later date. But at the, at, the, at the moment, term four is the next time that you can start the Master of Applied Finance or the Graduate Diploma. And if you're very quick, you could start a Graduate Certificate of Finance um, very, very soon.